Emerald Archer, the hood and the rise of vigilantism. Yo, what is going on, Silver Screen Studios family? My name is David. Most of you know me. If you don't, well, my name's David. I'm one of the hosts here at Silver Screen Studios, guys, and tonight we have a very, very special reaction and discussion. Tonight we had the episode of Arrow entitled The Emerald Archer, a.k.a. the 150th episode of Arrow. I, just for a moment, want to give a round of applause to the cast, the crew, the actors, Everybody who has, uh, over the years, poured so much love and energy into this show to make it a possibility and make it happen. Guys, you are amazing. You guys create content that we love. You have created characters that we have fell in love with, we have invested with, and a lot of them which we saw tonight. And I just thank you guys so much for all the dedication and hard work you guys provide, you know, from the cast. Stephen Amell, Emily Bett Ricards, David Ramsey, um... Oh, man, uh, Juliana Harkavy, Katie Lotz, um, Katie Cassidy, uh, Will Holland, um, Colton Haynes, Paul Blackthorne, all of them. Uh, you know, to the writers, Mark Guggenheim, Bess Schwartz, you guys are amazing. But, guys, otherwise, I'm not going to talk too much more. We have a lot of reactions tonight, a lot of great scenes, so let's get into this. All right, guys, so we made it through the episode, and uh, honestly, guys, this this was amazing. Um, I, I'd almost have to say this was better than the 100th episode. I don't know. The documentary style just made it so unique and magical for me, especially all the clips of previous seasons from, like, news events and, like, crowd footage. I don't know. It made it nostalgic, but then it also provided something new, you know? And we had the, we had the shocking but beautiful um, return of Quentin Lance and... I mean, you could see that he knew he was talking about Oliver and people that he knew, but he tried not to let it out. We had the return of Thea, which, I mean, she just blatantly put it as it is, you know. You know, she knew her brother's intentions, basically saying, when the city can't protect the people, the people have to protect themselves. And then Sarah Lance was back, guys. I didn't even expect that. I was just like, wow, so did the documentary crew just call the Wave Rider directly, or did Oliver send you a message, or how, how did you find out this was going on, uh, man, how did you, uh, t- take the time to get at, unstuck out of the time bubble that Constantine caused, I don't know, I kind of got lost on Legends, but that was beautiful to see her there, and, you know, she brought up the point of the simple reason why Oliver does this is because he doesn't want anybody else to experience the pain of losing their family, or experience the pain of what has happened to him, that is that humanizes. That's what Star City's been missing from Oliver. Just an explanation. You know, just something that says, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I started this. You know, and for it to come from other people besides him. You know. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've i got notes here. I'm looking at. You know, I, I'm, I'm getting se- I got serious about this episode. I took notes as I watched. Um, my next big point was Rory and Helena were mentioned in the episode, uh, if you guys don't remember, um, Ragman and Huntress. We haven't seen Huntress since season two. Um, technically, we saw her in the season 2.5 tie-in comic, where we actually see Helena strike a deal with Oliver to help him rescue Felicity. In exchange, he lets her go free. So in the Arrowverse, she is technically out of prison, roaming around somewhere we do not know. Uh, and I, I don't know if, uh, because they made a comment at the end of the episode that he just likes to collect the masks, so we don't know if that was meant to be a point of, um, if that was supposed to be a point of, oh, they're okay, he just took their masks, or what, but, um, I, I literally live tweeted, uh, at the show and at the writer room during the show that, uh, <laughs> if Rory and Helena are anything but, uh, injured or maybe prisoner, I will riot. (laughs) Or, uh, you have failed this city. Was the exact gift that I sent. Give me, can I hit a like button for that impression? It's been a, those of you who watch the channel, it has been a minute since I have done a arrow voice, which, uh, that needs to change. It's going to change. Um, so w- did you guys appreciate the Helena and Rory reference? You know, was that enough for you or did you want more from that? Um, also, uh, talking again about the fact that, uh, the behind the scenes footage, uh, of just all the previous years of Damien Dark's attack, the, uh, uh, brick siege, um, 
Slade Wilson's uh, Siege on the City, The Undertaking, seeing all these behind-the-scenes footages of uh, people, and then the surprise behind-the-scenes footage of from the night Roy turned himself in of a discussion between Quentin and Roy of, you really expect me to believe you that you're the arrow? I am, and why should I? Because I give this city something you can't hope. Which, of course, he's talking about Oliver, but I love seeing that. I love how they brought up the point that there are security cameras in this city. That's where a lot of this footage was framed to look like it was coming from, which I thought was beautiful, init- you know, innovative. It was awesome. And also on that note, this actually is in my notes, but um, I liked how the documentary crew even brought the point up that they had been working on this documentary for a while but it wasn't until Oliver became public that they had enough substance to really go forward and finish it, and they got funding. So it's awesome to see the, you know, to be reminded there are people out there who are interested and like what Oliver is doing, you know. Um, uh, let me know what your guys' comments and question or comments uh, questions you guys had about that. What you guys thought about that? I'm sorry, camera kind of glitched out there for a second. But uh, also, what did you? Uh, I, I really wasn't expecting it. I just found out the other day that William was supposed to be resurfacing in this episode. Young William, of course. Um, guys, what do you think is going on with William? You know, because obviously he, he's upset that he got sent away. You know, he, he doesn't see it as fair, but he also got himself kicked out. I'm taking that as a, uh, a simple fact. If he wanted to come home, he wanted to come home. He didn't want to be there. He didn't want all this pressure put on him. He just wanted to be at home with his family, which I think is fair, you know. But uh, what are you guys' uh, thoughts and theories on that? And, you know, did you guys enjoy the nice uh, moment with Renee? I'll be in the next room cleaning my gun. Like, yeah, Renee, you're going to pull a gun on Oliver Queen's child? Let me know how that goes for you, bud. <laughs> um, sorry you're so awkward about that, bud. Um... And uh, let's get on to the main point. I know a lot of you guys are probably fuming. I, I don't know how you guys feel about this because she kind of made up for it. But the fact that the mayor kind of publicly made a joke about herself by endangering the public blatantly when Oliver warned her and her police captain warned her that there was a credible threat endangering hundreds of people. But she took the opportunity to endanger those people just to crucify Oliver Queen in public. Don't you guys love how karma works? Because I found the documentary crew, you know, I was watching with my mom. That's kind of our, uh, that's kind of our, uh, weekly thing. We get together, we watch the CW shows. She brought up a good point. She goes, it is so stupid for that documentary crew to try to be running in there after him. But, um, what I noticed while watching it was, it was a good thing that documentary crew was there. Because they made a point of getting it on footage that this happened and showed Team Arrow coming out, saving lives, and working in action and being there to save the day. It wasn't, you know, it's not going to come off to the public like it used to. Some sketchy uh, group or team of vigilantes just shows up, takes out the bad guy, however, and just disappears. No accountability. This show, guys, was amazing for the fact of paying homage to years past, but then also setting up and propelling into the future. Let me know if you guys agree on that. I'm very passionate about this. But guys, what did you guys think about the mayor's decision to endanger those people? That was just that was a blatant, blatant abuse of her power, and I a betray a betrayal of the people's trust in her simply to go after a vendetta on Oliver Queen. Um, I did find it humorous how they're talking crap all the way up into the stage, and then they just, uh, handshake. It reminded me of, like, uh, the Mrs. Dark, Oliver Queen, mayoral debate scene. But, uh, and then, uh, speaking of the mayor, guys, I-, I think she had a little bit of change of heart on Team Arrow. You know, she's very hard on the stance of vigilantes, you know, as we've seen a case of a bad vigilante in this episode. Um... But I think the fact that Dinah's saving her life right then, and I, in the moment, my mom was, she was sitting there, she goes, what, she's just not going to do anything? And I'm like, I don't think she can, because it clicked in my head, I don't think she was ever outed as the Black Canary. I don't think anybody ever made that public or found that out, um, because there's been so many Black Canaries. Nobody knew if it was Sarah or Laurel Lance, and nobody, you know, but her saving the mayor's life right there. And then she, of course, you're one of them. But she didn't immediately say that. You know, Dinah snapped into action. She didn't wait for drama. She told her, you know, get everybody out of here. Get them safe. And the mayor looked at her, but what about you? That, for me, I was like, that shows that her heart has changed. She cares about Dinah. She respects Dinah. 
And so these evil um, law-breaking vigilantes suddenly just turned into somebody that she respected and trusted. You know, I feel like it was a little bit of a mayor experience a qu- experiencing a Quentin Lance lesson. Um, so, And, you know, we saw that in the end of, you know, Dinah was willing to uh, sacrifice her job to protect her team, and Oliver even was willing to go back to prison to sac- you know, to save his team. And I think that struck a chord in the mayor. I really did, because I think that humanized them in her eyes. They weren't just these ominous group of people running around causing havoc, reigning chaos. But, you know, and I love, you know, Best Schwartz and the writing crew on Arrow this year have been amazing, because a lot of the dialogue you have to start reading in between the lines now, and I love it. I love that kind of dialogue. That's why I've loved the show Suits. I've loved Doctor Who just for those deeper meaning dialogue moments when she told them the anti-vigilante law stands. But Monday morning, you will give a badge to each and every one of them, therefore not making them vigilantes, so they can still have the law, but their heroes are no longer outside of the law and can be prosecuted or demonized. And, I mean, they've been showing... I dropped my pen. Um, They've been showing the fact that uh, the city is torn. The city doesn't know whether to believe their officials, you know, um, who are giving them this hate speech on vigilantes and these people who for years have been putting themselves in the way of, uh, you know, the way of fire for them and saving their butts over and over and over again from miracle soldiers to nuclear weapons. Um, but I think there's also, we've been shown that there's a lot of the population of Star City that wants their heroes back. They showed it at that public debate that Dinah was at, I think the third or fourth episode, that he's like, the, you know, the guy stands up, no, it's just crap, the city was better when we actually had people out here willing to do things to protect us. Where are our vigilantes? We want them back. You know, I thought that was beautiful, and guys, I'm excited to see Team Arrow back and that brings me to my next point, and I actually today, the Arrow writers hosted a Q&A on Instagram, and I participated, and I asked, you know, is the bunker or a version of the Arrow Cave ever going to come back, you know, and I never got a response, and I was like, oh, come on, you know, that was a good question, and then tonight, I know why I didn't get a response, because I asked about a spoiler, guys, the bunker is coming back you know, but I am kind of worried in that scene because when Oliver announced that, you know, we're going to rebuild. We're going to make it better. We're going to be better. I have a feeling this is creating an MCU problem where him making this statement in this documentary to the public becomes an invite to challenge. Let me channel my inner Paul Bettany vision here for a second that them advertising their strength and their unity and their power is going to invite more problems. And, you know, in this you know in this world that's been created through the Green Arrow, the Flash, the Legends, Supergirl, you're going to have challengers. You're going to have problems. But do you guys kind of catch what I'm getting on that? How do you, you know, I want to, comment down below, what would your guys' reaction and your thoughts when Team Arrow was back, they were officiated, the bunker, he told them, you know, it's coming back. And then let's get to the last thing, guys. The future, this documentary is banned. It has been destroyed in all places but one. In the uh, And is in the hands of Blackstar. Who, I'm sorry guys, I'm still saying this. She is somehow the child of either Oliver or Felicity. Because that was a lot of emotion and hatred towards Oliver on that screen. Look at her look. That is not her just looking at some guy she heard about. I would not be surprised if Oliver is her father and she is looking at him basically saying, you know, you abandoned me, you risked your life, you know, you didn't, you weren't around for me. But then here's the big point in the future, guys. They find the bunker again, but here's the thing. She finds it with Connor Hawk, ladies and gentlemen. Connor Hawk is back. He is in the flash forwards. Now, I don't know if this leaves us in the official Star City 2046 timeline of Legends of Tomorrow because there's a couple gaps. They have confirmed Grant Wilson exists, you know, that he is out there. But here's the thing. They say in that future Star City 2046 timeline that Grant Wilson outs Oliver Queen but that, of course, is not the case in this timeline, you know, and we can equate that to either, you know, a uh, Flashpoint side effect maybe, or that maybe it's Nora coming back to the present, or just some of the reality effects 
or maybe Oliver will be secret identity again after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, that seems like a small detail to be a side effect, but I don't know. Guys, what did you think about seeing Connor Hawk again? It was weird because he almost seemed hesitant to be involved in all this vigilante stuff, given the fact that, uh, you know, half a, I think it's about half a decade because it's 2040 that we're flashing forward to now. So in 2046, Connor Hawk is the new Green Arrow. Um, after thing is ev after everything is complete chaos, which kind of does make sense because if this whole bomb plan goes down, that means Star City is in ruins and in chaos. So that would mean that it's in the perfect place for Star City 2046 to come to place. But here's the thing: is uh, John Diggle is he already dead in the future? I are we going to yet see Connor fail to see save him? Because here's my theory on the future, guys. I think OTA is alive and well somewhere. But they are in hiding. They are planning something, but they are in hiding. And I don't know. That's just my theories, guys. But, guys, I have been rambling for nearly 15 minutes now talking about these points. Guys, what was your favorite moment of this? Even, guys, uh, comment down below what your favorite moment of this episode was. Or I'm going to take a cue from the Arrow writers on Twitter today. Comment your favorite scene from Arrow ever. Just comment the episode or describe the scene for me. I guarantee you, photographic memory, those of you who know me, I have this uncanny gift for memorizing TV shows and history of TV shows and lines. So even if you can quote a line, I can find the scene. So comment down below what your favorite scene of Arrow has been so far in the first 150 episodes, guys. And guys, can we just also hit and smash that like button, hit the comments up down below for the fact that uh, we can congratulate Arrow on hitting this major milestone, congratulating them on Season 8, which they have been renewed and confirmed, along with Supergirl, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Black Lightning, and Supernatural, who is now in Season 15. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's uh, show, you know, let's just kind of show our thanks. Uh, use the hashtag Arrow down below, or no, use the hashtag Arrow150. Um, otherwise, guys, that is about it for me today. Um, guys, um, I'm probably going to be posting a separate video for reactions if you guys want that. But this was recommended, uh, a couple people re recommended that they just wanted to see a review rather than a bunch of reactions. You know, that they've seen the episode, they don't need to see it again. Um, but guys, let me know what you guys think about this format. Um, comment down below if you want to see the reaction video, because I have those filmed. Um, I'm just, I'm debating whether I want to put them out, because I don't want to put them out if you guys don't want to see them. So, just let me know what you guys would like to see. Um, otherwise, guys, my name is David. Thank you for joining us again on a great Monday, a historic Monday, um, 150th night for Arrow. And otherwise, guys, I will see you tomorrow night, uh, for Flash, most likely. Um, if we have some big, uh, story moments, I will probably be doing a reaction video for that. Um, otherwise, uh, probably a discussion video, at the very least. Um, and otherwise, guys, we will be doing a Supernatural video this week, uh, because it is the 300th episode of Supernatural, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan's back as John Winchester. So if you guys are, uh, fans of Supernatural, I, uh, encourage you, uh, click that bell notification. That way, when the video comes up on Thursday night or Friday morning, you guys can be notified as soon as that's up, and you guys can enjoy the fresh uh, content. Otherwise, guys, be sure to check us out on Facebook at Silver Screen Studios, and we are also on Twitter at, at Studios underscore screen. Um, I do live tweeting during the shows on that. I post pictures, stuff like that, funny jokes, retweet news for the CW so you guys can stay up to date like I do. Um, otherwise, guys, that is about it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, and you guys all have a great night, and here's to the next 150 episodes of Arrow.